Hi everyone, this is Sushma, Java trainer. So last video we have discussed about the Java features. So in this video, I would like to discuss about JVM architecture. See, everybody know that JVM is nothing but a Java virtual mission, which is used to convert bytecode instructions into mission code. But what will be happen internally in the JVM? So let us see, first of all, uh, uh, we have to discuss about JVM architecture. So we are having one diagram. So after discussing that, I will discuss about each and every part in the JVM architecture. So let us see here, guys, what is the diagram we are having? Let us go to paint. So if you are going for any interview, uh, especially for freshers, not for experienced person, this question is asked especially for freshers. Can you explain about JVM architecture? So you can ask the interviewer, sir, can you give a piece of paper? I need to explain with a diagram. So that is the correct way uh, you are answering to the interviewer. Why? Because JVM architecture cannot be explained orally you need to show in a diagrammatic format. After that, you need to explain each and every part in the JVM. Okay, that is the way you can ask to the interviewer. So this is the small suggestion from my side. So let us see here, guys. Okay, so let us see here guys. First of all, uh, we are having dot class file, right? What we are having dot class file. So dot class file is nothing but your byte code. Dot class file is nothing but your uh, byte code. Okay, so whatever the byte code you are having. So this byte code will be send it to the class loader subsystem where we are sending this byte code class loader subsystem. So this is the first part of our uh, uh, JVM. Class loader subsystem is nothing but first part of your JVM. So class loader subsystem. So this class loader subsystem is again divided into five parts. How many parts you are dividing into five parts? So let us see what, is, what are the five parts we are having so class order subsystem is divided into five parts so first one is nothing but you are having first one is nothing but you are having method area what what you are having method area so here we have to write method area and second one we are having heap what we are having heap third one java stacks third one is nothing but java stacks next fourth one we are having pc registers PC registers and fifth one we are having native method stacks what we are having native method stacks these are the five parts which are present in class loader subsystem native method stacks and next from this you are having execution engine You can create a communication with execution engine. 
so execution engine can contain two parts again what it is going to contain two parts what are those two parts so let us see here here first one is nothing but uh, interpreter and uh, second one is nothing but jit compiler so what is this one execution engine so i am writing here execution uh, engine which can contain two parts so that is nothing but uh, first one interpreter interpreter and this can be called it as an jit compiler what we are going to call it as an jit compiler from this you are going to create a communication with native method interface native method interface native method interface and finally we are having native method library what we are having native method library so this is nothing but jvm architecture what we are going to call it as a jvm architecture native method library so let us see uh, explanation for this diagram uh, so what class loader subsystem will have what execution will do execution engine will do and uh, what are the parts we are having in the class loader in each part what will be happen let us see with an explanation first of all uh what we are doing whatever the dot class file you are taking the dot class file will be forwarded into the class loader subsystem so first of all we have to know what is class loader subsystem let us see some explanation for that so first one what we are going to call it as a class loader subsystem class loader subsystem so see here guys first of all whatever the dot class file you are having the dot class file from the computer hard disk into the memory so it loads dot class file from the computer hard disk into the memory so whatever the dot class file you are taking the dot class will be loaded into the system memory okay see it loads the dot class file from the computer hard disk from the computer hard disk into the memory into the memory so dot class file is nothing but bytecode bytecode will be loaded into the memory this is the first point second point then it verifies then it verifies all bytecode then it verifies all bytecode in instructions all bytecode in instructions of the dot class file of the dot class file so if any instruction if any instruction other than the byte is found other than the byte is found then it will then it will discard the program discard the program or it will display some error messages some error messages already we know that bytecode is nothing but a fixed set of instructions so how many instructions we are having totally we are having 200 instructions in this uh, if any instruction 
other than the byte is spawned then it is going to discard the program or it is going to display some error message what will be happen in the third point if all the byte code instructions if all the byte code instructions are all right if all the byte code instructions are all right then class loader then class loader subsystem will allocate memory will allocate a yeah, memory so they will ask you one question guys what is the inter question they are going to ask you what is the inter question they will ask you who will who will allocate memory to a java program so this is the question they are going to ask you but most of the people can say that jvm will allocate a memory but in jvm we are having a class loader subsystem so class loader subsystem will allocate memory to a java program so you need to answer like this so next class loader subsystem is divided into five parts or not now we people know what is class loader subsystem now we are going to see what are the five parts in the class loader subsystem so class loader subsystem is divided into how many parts five parts so let us see the first one is nothing but method area what we are going to take here method area what method area can contain method area can contain class code method code static variables and static blocks so which are pres which are stored in method area see class code and method code method code is stored on method area are stored on method area any static variables any static variables and static blocks what we are going to take here static blocks are stored on method area or stored on method area so what method area can contain method area can contain static variables static blocks class code and method code so second what is the second one we are having heap heap is nothing but objects are created on heap objects are created on heap so in heap memory objects are created and third one java stacks what is the third one we need to take here java stacks so what are java stacks what we are going to take here what are java stacks so these are the memory areas these are the memory areas where java methods are executed java methods are executed okay so whatever the java methods you are writing in the program all the methods will be executed in the uh, java stack memory okay so java stacks java stacks are divided into small parts divided into small parts called frames okay so whatever the java stack you are having the java stack is divided into frames okay in each frame what will be happen see java stack is divided into parts called frames in each frame we can execute methods see when we are writing any java program the java program does not contain single method right so it can contain any number of methods so each method can be executed in separate frame in java stacks in each frame in each frame we can execute we can execute methods we can execute uh, methods so that is nothing but what we are calling it as java stacks okay now fourth one fourth one is nothing but pc registers so what is a pc pc is nothing but program counter what is the meaning of pc program counter so what pc will do okay so let us see here these registers what we are going to take here these registers store these registers store the memory address 
these registers store the memory address of next instruction of next instruction to be executed to be executed by the microprocessor by the micro processor so that is nothing but what we are going to call it as an program con program counter so this program counter will give instructions to the java stacks then java stack will execute the methods okay so next fifth point so fifth one is nothing but native method stacks what we are going to take here native method stacks so what are native method stacks these are the memory areas these are the memory areas where native methods where native methods what are native methods native methods are nothing but c and c++ programs are executed so that is nothing but native methods okay so these all are nothing but five parts which are present in class loader subsystem okay now we are going to discuss second one so that is nothing but execution engine execution engine once the class loader subsystem will be done with the five parts we are having execution engine why because we need to execute a java program or not so if you want to execute any java program execution engine can contain two parts you people already know interpreter interpreter means which can convert uh, source code to machine code line by line so by using interpreter the performance of a program is very slow to overcome that we are using jit compiler jit compiler is nothing but just in time compiler by using compiler you can convert source code into machine code in single step so the performance is increased by using jit compiler or not so let us see it contains it contains interpreter it contains interpreter and jit compiler and jit compiler so which converts which converts the bytecode instructions the bytecode instructions into machine code into machine code instructions next these machine code instructions these machine code instructions are created by or created by microprocessor or created by microprocessor and results are displayed and results are displayed so this is nothing but what we are calling it as execution engine so next we are going to see native method interface native method interface what is native method interface it is a program it is a program what is native method interface it is a program that copies that copies native method libraries native method libraries into the jvm into the jvm okay so this is all about your jvm architecture so if any interviewer ask you explain about jvm architecture means first of all you need to draw this diagram and you need to explain each and every part in the jvm thank you